Jamal Does Vinyl. I'm your host, Jamal Radio Raheem. Now, Jamal Does Vinyl is a vinyl show, whether it's me talking about my recent buys, showing you off my collection, going to a record store, or just having a conversation about vinyl with some of my folks. That's what it's going to be. Now, in this episode, this is part two of my favorites from my collection. So without further ado, let's get into this episode. So the first vinyl that I'm showing you is J. Dilla Donuts. Um, I used to listen to this album all the time when I was like in college for sure, like if I'm studying or anything like that. This is definitely getting a spin. Um, I love Jay Dilla. I think he's one of the greatest producers of all time. I think Donuts is his like masterpiece, you know. And hearing like how this album was like actually like made and stuff like that, it's even crazier. Like hearing that, um, I watched the Dilla documentary. And that was an amazing documentary. Um, but shout out to Jay Dilla, RIP, to one of the greatest producers of all time. The music on there is so fantastic. Like, these instrumentals are samples that seem like they wouldn't work together, but they do. And that is crazy. RIP to Jay Dilla, one of the greatest of ever do it. Next album is an underground classic. It's an underground classic. It's that Blue and Exile. It's that Below the Heavens. I was I I was so excited when I got this like and I I bought it online so I knew it was coming in the mail and I was tracking every day to get this bad boy like this is a fantastic project Blue is an underground legend in my opinion I don't care what anybody says I am biased I know I am I'm from California so is he so Cal in this bitch but um Blue and Exile man this it starts so fire too like my world is that instrumental that instrumental alone i want i wonder if they have the instrumentals of just this album um i'm gonna look into it the next album care for me by saba or saba however y'all want to say it um i think this project right here didn't get the love that it deserved and it got a lot of love like i think it should have been nominated for awards like i listened to this so much life was literally on repeat um on repeat how he how he just his storytelling on here that's is what improves from this album from the bucket list was the storytelling um heaven all around me to tell it from perspective of john walt r.i.p john walt was dope as hell like that was that was just that's when i knew he was on another level um prom king the story that he tells on that also come on come on like this album right here is just fantastic you know what i'm saying like shout out to saba this bad boy right here this bad boy right here like i don't know who put me onto this but thank you. She's one of them artists that I want to see uh, perform live. Like this, this album from the first song to the end. Like when Bittersweet comes on and she just starts piping with them vocals. Just giving you them vocals. Fantastic. Fantastic. Like I think everybody should have this in their collection. I think this is an album that's going to be seen as a masterpiece in a few years. I feel like it didn't get the love because it came out during, like, the pandemic. Like, but it's a fantastic project. Like, them vocals, them vocals, the songwriting. Like, I didn't know who she was until the pandemic. Um, so I don't know who put me on. Like, uh, but shout out to whoever put me on to this. Um, oh, I have to show you the inside. I have to. Wouldn't be me if I didn't show you the inside. This next album right here is that Stevie Wonder. This is one of the greatest albums of all time. You already know Songs in the Key of Life is one of the greatest albums of all time. One of the greatest R&B albums of all time. Like the amount of hits that he has on this album. Like Sir Duke's on here. Like Isn't She Lovely's on here as is all is on here as well to me that's a top 10 r&b song of all time like it's a beautiful song like it's just great from the from the lyrics to the beat 
to Stevie's voice, like what he's doing with his voice, to him playing instruments, all that type of stuff. Fantastic on that song. Like he had a he had a three album run. Like the three album run with this album. That's one of the greatest three album runs in music history. This album right here too. I'm gonna get another copy. Um because I wanna frame it. I wanna frame this album. I think it's that great. Um I'm gonna get another copy of this album. But Songs in the Key of Life by Stevie Wonder, man. This is a this was a dream. I saw this at Streetlight Records, right? So I was going in there. The crazy thing is, I was looking for what's going on by Marvin Gaye. I don't know how I stumbled into the Stevie Wonder section and I saw this and I immediately grabbed it. I immediately grabbed it and went in line and purchased it. Like, shout out to Stevie. Um, one of the greatest to ever do it. Next album. The next album, Lucky Day, Painted. I think Painted... Um, should have won a Grammy. I stand on it. I think there's not one bad song on Painted. Like, Roll Some More, Late Night, Extra, All Bangers. My personal favorite on here. Might Be Misunderstood or Love You Too Much. Floods is, is also running in that race. I think that he's doing everything on this. Like, he's giving you the different types of R&B. He's giving you pop. He's giving you everything. His vocals, like Lucky Day is one of them artists that can do no wrong. Um, this is the deluxe edition too. This has the Misunderstood Live from New Orleans, which didn't know that I needed that, you know what I'm saying? But Lucky Day, fantastic artist, you know what I'm saying? Painted is one of my favorite R&B albums to come out in the last couple of years. I think this is a, a magnificent project. You know what I'm saying? Next album is by the beautiful Ari Lennox. Um, if you know me, you know how I feel about Shea Butter Baby. Um, I think this album has no skips. I feel like in five years, we're going to talk about this album the same way we talk about Baduism. I really think this is a masterpiece. A masterpiece, you know? I personally, lately, I've been playing Whipped Cream a lot. A lot. And I used to always skip that song. Like, I thought it was a good song. But I used to always skip it because, like, I wasn't... I don't know why, to be honest. I have no good reason why I used to skip that song. I used to skip that song. Um, I've been playing it a lot. And that and FaceTime. But, like, there's not a bad song on this album. Like, she put her coochie in that. And I, I mean what I said. Ari Lennox can do no wrong. The beautiful Ari Lennox, Shea Butter Baby, classic album, classic. This next album, A Seat at the Table, Solange. This is one of my favorite just albums, not just like in my collection, my favorite albums ever. Um, it's in my top 10 favorite albums, no matter the genre. I love this album. What she's doing on this album is amazing. The interludes, um, they work so well. Like the features that she chose for this album, fantastic. Like my personal favorite on here is Don't Touch My Hair. And at the time too, when this came out, I had long hair and people were trying to touch my hair. So I was feeling that song a little bit more than I normally would feel that song. But this is a fantastic project. Solange really did that thing. Um, FUBU, also fantastic. Cranes in the Sky, fantastic. Like, there's not a bad song on here. Like, the process that she had to go through to make this album, it had to be, like, I wish I could be in that room for the sessions for this album. I think it's fantastic. I think it's great. I think she doesn't even have to release another album. And we was, I would be fine with just this. I will be fine. I'm not going to speak for everybody else. <laughs> I will be fine knowing that she gave us this masterpiece, that she put her work into this. This is a fantastic album. A seat at the table, Solange. Now, if you if you know me, if you know me, you know how I feel about this next man. Bruno Mars, the legend, the legend Bruno Mars, you know what I'm saying? Doo-wops and hooligans. Listen, 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 listen. Listen. 
this project when it came out in like what 2010 um i was listening to the hell i from the moment i heard this project i was like that man's going somewhere he's gonna be a legend he's gonna be a legend and he is a legend in my eyes but um like let me just go through the hits grenade just the way you are lazy song marry you liquor store blues Talking to the moon. Come on, man. Come on, man. Bruno did that thing. He did that thing. Like, there's not a bad song on here. Not a bad song. I'm a big fan of Bruno Mars, you know what I'm saying? He, I got to see him live. Can't wait, you know. I'm going to spend the grip to go see him. Like, the amount of hits this man has, like, I played the hell out of Liquor Store Blues. On the other side, honestly, I'm going to say this. Bruno Mars and B.O.B. need to do a collab, EP, project, something. Something. Because they, they have the formula. When they work together, it always works. It always works. But Bruno Mars, Doo Wop, and Hooligans, classic. I'm a fan of Bruno. He's a legend in my eyes. And this last project, and the reason why I chose to put this one last, is because this project means so much to me. Apologies in advance, Sylvan Le um, or Sylvan, and you feel me. Um, this album, at the time that I listened to it, I needed this more than I thought I needed it. Um, it's basically like going through like a AA meeting, you know what I'm saying? Apologies in advance, see what you did there. Um, but it's like going through steps. Each song is relating to like the steps, the 12 steps that you go through. Fantastic, you know what I'm saying? Like for any young black man at the time too, this was definitely needed. Like um, I was going through trying to like figure out who I was after going through like graduating college and relationships and death in the family and all that type of stuff. I was trying to evaluate like who I am and trying to figure out growth basically, you know what I'm saying? Like I needed to grow. I felt stagnant. Um this album was definitely necessary. So shout out to Sylvan, you know, I don't want to talk for like 20 minutes <laughs> about the importance of this album. Like this is one of the albums that I have two of because I think it was that important to me. Like um it's definitely getting framed the other copy that I got. I'm not even opening it. Um, but shout out to Sylvan. Apologies in advance. Um, important album for me. Definitely one of my favorites in my collection. And with that being said, this has been Jamal Does Vinyl. I've been your host, Jamal Radio Raheem. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. All that stuff, man. I'll catch y'all next week. Peace out.